Well, to start the hour, we're taking a look at China. As reopening pressures grow amid protests over strict COVID zero curbs, the country will bolster vaccination amongst its senior citizens as China seeks a path to reopening. And Akiko, a lot of, as this has been building momentum, we saw that it did pair back a little bit as China had university students go home, probably to stop a lot of these gatherings and these rallies continuing. Yeah, no question about that. When you look at the protests and you look at the uptick we have seen in cases, this has really put Chinese President Xi Jinping in a quarter, uh, corner at a time when there are serious questions about the company, uh, country's economic growth prospects. And we started the year with a target of 5.5%. Clearly, they're not going to reach that. You had Nomura, which has been very bearish on China, coming out and saying they expect growth to be around 2.4% in Q4. You've got 20% unemployment among the youngest employees, and these are the ones that are going out and showing their discontent. Now, uh, Rochelle, I, I think it's important to sort of take a step back to, to put this in context. Why we're seeing the protests play out at a time where we're seeing an uptick in these cases. 80 cities currently fighting a surge in COVID cases right now. You compare that to where it was in the spring, just 50 cities. Yes, Shanghai was a big deal, and that was a huge lockdown. But this is significantly more than what we saw back in the spring. And all of this, of course, elevating, as you mentioned, these social tensions that we have seen play out across the country. Uh, really hard to overstate how significant it is to, to see these kind of protests, the most widespread protests we've seen since the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989. And then, of course, on Tuesday over in China, as expected, we have seen that crackdown coming with students being asked to go home, uh, also crack down on social media. We've gotten reports over uh, in some major cities of police stopping pedestrians to check their apps, check their phones to see who's actually organizing all of this. So, you know, it, it's certainly interesting to see how all of this has kind of come to a head at a time when some would argue that the Chinese government potentially could have been thinking about easing on those COVID restrictions. I mean, it does seem to be a failure to adapt. We're seeing that some footage that's being broadcast on Chinese state broadcasters, perhaps blurring out some of these images of supporters at the World Cup who don't have masks on, because it is that stark reminder that the rest of the world is opening up and managing COVID without having a zero COVID policy and getting back to normal. So I understand the frustration. People getting, obviously staying locked down in China when they have health emergencies. That's another thing that's also fueling the protests. People want to be people want to be let out. They want to, they want more freedom. And it's interesting though because when you look at how some of these Chinese stocks and ADRs are reacting, some of these are, are a longer play, waiting for China to turn around at some point. But others are looking at this longer view that look, the lockdowns aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So you have companies like Alibaba, Baidu, Pinduoduo, JD.com, e-commerce. They're relying on people staying home and continuing continuing to stay home and perhaps purchase online, whether it's food or technology, and or having to work from home, because perhaps there isn't a silver lining anytime soon, Akiko. Yeah, and of course, we're watching those Chinese companies, but the impact to a company's international exposure is certainly significant. We've been talking about Apple a lot because of the hit they're likely to take. When you think about these cities that have been hit the hardest, we're talking about 90% of exports coming from there. So no question a trickle effect to come here supply chain disruptions. We have seen this story before, but something that we're going to continue to follow as we see this uptick in cases over in China.